Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through each of the APRSM theory grades. Once you've completed your Music Theory and Practice workbook, past papers are an excellent revision resource and I've worked with you from 2014 right through the papers to 2018 and now I'm thrilled to be able to bring 2019 to you as well. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available to download in US letter or A4, and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best be prepared for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time come exam day. So if you go to SharonBill.com you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really super, and please do subscribe to my channel and share out the videos. And now we're going to make a start on the 2019 practice paper A. So if you turn with me to the start of that paper on page 3, and we'll have a look at this together. Although actually I will just say, work in pencil, and then it doesn't matter if you go wrong, nice sharp pencil, I use a mechanical pencil. Uh, and then you've got an eraser to hand just in case something goes wrong and I suggest you have a go of these on your own first of all or at least listen to the first part of it and then re-access into the video it's much better to learn by your mistakes so I'm hoping you've had a go at this and now we'll check through these together so we need to add a time signature to each of these five melodies so we're going to need five different time signatures and the first job we're going to have to decide for each one is to decide whether we're in simple or compound time and decide what the bottom number is, what unit beat are we counting in. And some bars are easier to spot than others. And so here we can see we're in a group of three, albeit one and a half plus a half gives you two of that three, so one, two, three. Three, we can see just visually we're in a group of three and if we just check back here we can see one crotchet one quarter note divides into two quavers three they aren't beamed and so we can see that each group falls there so we're in compound time and so we're going to be counting in quaver beats here I suggest so one two three four five six so that works out if we're counting in quaver beats 6 over 8. 3 over 4 counting in crotchet beats or quarter notes would not be correct because 3 over 4 is simple time where we're counting in groups of 2. If you just, I'm just going to use a bit of space here and just delve into that briefly. So 3 over 4 is 3 quarter notes, 3 crotchet beats and so it's divided into groups of 2. Whereas 6 8 is two groups of three, and you can see it's grouped in threes. Simple time divides into two, compound time divides into three, and so 6 8 is the only appropriate answer there. And we can see one quaver beat, one eighth note, two semis gives us another one. 3, 1, 2, and there's a quaver beat rest, 1, 2, 3, so 6, 8, okie dokie, let's press on, so now we can see we're in simple time, we can see we're in groups of two, two beats, not necessarily two notes, and let's just look at this bar here, so we know that two semiquavers, two sixteenth notes, is the same as one eighth note, one quaver, so we can see here we have two quaver beats joined together so it's simple time. Here we have a quaver beat. Now half of that is a semiquaver or a sixteenth note and we also know if you want to just double check on your PDF you can see that one quaver divides into two semiquavers, two sixteenth notes or four demi-semis, 
four thirty second notes. So we can see two demi semis make a semi quaver. Two thirty second notes make a semi quaver. And so here, two sem demi semis, two thirty second notes give us a semi quaver. So the dot and these two notes here give us another quaver beat when added up. So we can see one half a beat if we counted in crotchets, two halves. So there's one beat, there's one beat. So our bottom number is four and we can see that there are two crotchet groups, two quarter notes, so two over four. There is the possibility that you could also count that as four over eight because that's still a simple time signature. If you're counting it in quaver notes or eighth notes, that would work out just the same. So either two over four or four over eight would be acceptable. If we want to just check this last bar, just to give it a little bit more work, so a bit of extra revision, we can see we have one quaver there, one eighth note. Now half as much again is like a semi-quaver's worth. And there we have another semi-quaver or 16th note and those two together give us a quaver. So quaver, quaver gives us one crotchet beat. Now here, it's easy to just diagram that out, especially if math isn't your strong point like me. So there's a full crotchet beat and I'm dividing it into quarters. So semi-quavers or 16th notes. So a quaver is half of a beat and then half as much as that again because of the dot is a quarter of a beat and then there's a quarter of a beat rest and so that's our crotchet beat completed. So two over four or four over eight will do. Let's press on. So let's look at this next one. Now don't let triplets confuse you. Remember it just means three in the time of two. So three semiquavers or sixteenth notes in the time of two semiquavers or two sixteenth notes. So we know that all of that is two semiquavers, two sixteenth notes or alternative we can just reduce it down again it's one quaver beat. Two semiquavers, two sixteenth notes gives us a quaver beat and there's another quaver beat. So we can see all of those are beamed together and we have one, two, three quaver beats and the only way to answer that would be three over eight, three eighth notes, three quaver beats per bar. You couldn't count it in crotchet beats because that would give you like one and a half. You couldn't count it in minim beats or half notes because that would be three quarters of a beat, you haven't got enough to make a minim beat. The only way to do that would be three over eight. Let's just look at this bar just to um, give it a little bit of extra revision. The point of these practice papers is to give you revision, so let's squeeze every last drop out of it. So we have a semi-quaver here, or a sixteenth note, and we know that two demi-semis, two thirty-second notes, give us another semi-quaver. And those two semi-quavers, or sixteenth notes, give us a quaver, an eighth note. So there's one quaver beat. And then a crotchet divides into two quavers, two eighth notes. So one, two, three. So three over eight. There we go. Let's move on to the next bar. So here, this is quite a long bar. You can see straight away we've got a semi breathe a whole note. We've got quite a long bar, so I'm going to just take a stab and try it in many beats or half notes. So we're counting to see how many of these fit in. So we know that a semi breathe or a whole note divides into two half notes, two minims. And then here we have a crotchet which is worth three quarters with this dot here. So we have a crotchet, let's just, there's a crotchet, a quarter note and half as much again with the quaver gives us another quarter note which together two crotchets two quarter notes gives us a minim beat so we have one two three minim beats so if our bottom number is two counting in half notes or minim beats we can see we have one two three let's just check this next bar so there that's a half note or a minim beat rest so there's one there's one of course and then 
we have one crotchet beat and two quavers add up to a crotchet so two crotchets give us a min in beat a half note one two three so yes definitely three over two and then this final bar now again don't let triplet signs confuse you it just means three in the time of two so two quaver beats if we reduce it down again gives us a crotchet beat so there we can see we have one crotchet beat and also the beaming is the clue we can see it's beamed in a crotchet beat group let's see if that continues here so we have a quaver and two semi quavers which make a quaver two sixteenth notes make an eighth note and two quavers two eighth notes together gives us a crotchet beat and we can see we grouped in a crotchet beat so we can tell that our bottom note is four quarter notes or crotchet beats so we have one crotchet beat here and then half as much again is a quaver or an eighth note and we know that two semi quavers reduced down gives us a quaver an eighth note and then if we sort of combine the value of the dot and this little group here that gives us a crotchet beat so we have one two three four crotchet beats per bar let's double check it in this bar here so of course we have one crotchet beat here we have half a crotchet beat here two semi quavers make a quaver or an eighth note which is half of a crotchet beat so together those two will give us one so we've got one two beats so far a quaver is half of a beat a quaver rest is half of a beat so those two together give us another crotchet beat and there's a crotchet beat or a quarter note rest one two three four so four over four will definitely answer that question alternatively you could call it common time and actually because it's still in simple time it will still work out correct to have it as two 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 men in beats because we can see we've got one min in beat, one min in beat. So we could say two over two, which then means we could also say the alla breve, the sort of split common time. So any one of those will answer that question correctly. So I think we've, sque we've squeezed every last drop out of that and made maximum use of that section for revision purposes, which is the whole point of these papers. Let's press on to question two. So again, we're still de dealing with timing issues, but now we're looking at rests. Now we need to reflect each group, each unit beat, because if you remember from your music theory and practice workbook, each new beat requires a new rest. Just the same as the rules of beaming and grouping, we need to show where each beat falls. And so we do that by beaming or putting rests to show the grouping. So 9-8 is compound time and it has one, two, three beats per bar. One, two, three, three groups of three. I got a bit carried away there. There we go. And so we need to show those beats by showing where the rests will fall. So we can see here's our first group of one, two, three, quaver beats, three eighth notes. Let's work from the back. One, two, three, there's our next group. So one, two, so we're still one quaver beat missing. We have half of that in a semi quaver, and so we need a semi quaver rest to complete that unit beat. One, two, three, one, two three one two three we're counting groups of three quaver beats there we go now here again if you remember we've got to show group one group two group three and so we've got that group is accounted for one two three 
So we have six quaver beads. Now it would not be appropriate to do a dotted minim. Although mathematically that would fit, that is not showing where each new beat falls. We need to show each new beat needs a new rest. So we'd have to do one, two, three, dotted crotchet rest, dotted quarter note rest, one, two, three, dotted quarter note rest. So we must show each new beat. There we go. So the next one is three crotchet beats, three quarter notes per bar, and so we must reflect this in our grouping. So if we were beaming, we'd have to beam to show each crotchet beat, apart from the couple of exceptions where we can group more if it's half of a bar. That won't be the case here, we're not dealing with four, four. And so what we need to do, rub that out, that's just a little in the side there. We need to show beat one, beat two, beat three. So the beaming shows us beats one and two, but let's do the maths. Half plus a half of a beat, quaver, quaver equals crotchet, eighth, eighth, quarter note. So here, if maths isn't your strong point, just diagram it out. So there's four quarters of a beat, so we have half a beat. Half as much again because of the dot, and then two eighths of a beat, two demi-semiquavers, the 32nd note gives us our remaining quarter, so that's definitely one beat. We have half a beat here, and so we've literally just got half a beat to show as a rest. Quaver, quaver, eighth note, eighth note. There we go. So then, here we go. So two quarters of a beat and a half a beat, if I just diagram that out. Quarter of a beat, quarter of a beat, half a beat. That's beat one. So here, just moving to the back, because this is where we've got to do the thinking. So moving to the back, two halves give us a crotchet. So there's beat two. And we know that a crotchet beat a quarter note divides into quarters. We've got one, two, three quarters. We need a quarter of a beat rest. So that's soon done. Now let's look at the next bit here. This is where it would be easy to just lose a couple of marks or lose at least one mark if we're not careful because remember each new beat requires a new rest. So here is beat one, there's beat one and we've gone halfway into beat two. So we've got one and a half. We need to finish that half before we go to beat three. If you do one and a half, just to fill the gap, that won't be correct because you've not shown each new beat. So there's beat one, the first half of beat two, there's the second half of beat two, and then we have beat three. So we're showing beat one, beat two, beat three. So you must put two different rests there. There we go then. So I think we've made most use of that. That's the end of that question. I do hope that's helping you. I hope it's helpful to your studies. These papers are a great resource if we can just make most use of them. And I hope I can help you to do that. I hope you're enjoying doing that. I'm certainly enjoying working with you. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's out there to help you on my website. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.